So, what is most important? Most important is to do bhajan, is to worship the Lord. Is to worship the Lord. How to worship Him? With loving devotion. <coughs> we may love anyone in this world, but if we don't practice to love God, then it doesn't have any meaning. It doesn't carry any value. We may do so many things, but if we don't uh, practice to love Krishna, then it has no meaning. <clears throat> Krishna is not just a God. He is not just a personality who will rescue us from these worldly afflictions. He is there to bestow us the best thing. What is that? Love. Loving devotion. Devotional service. Without that, life doesn't carry any meaning, any importance. There is no value. <clears throat> because only to survive is not the idea. Mm -hmm. Even if we do nothing, then also we will survive. We don't need to do anything. You can see in the world there is no such person who dies starving. Hmm? Oh, very few people. But everyone in this world, whoever the person is, there is someone who is giving them food. And who is that? The Lord Himself. Even dogs are fed, hawks are fed. Hmm? Hog is also never remains hungry. And dogs also never remain hungry. They are taken care of very nicely. How can human beings suffer without food? Without shelter? Everything is provided by the Lord. Unfortunately, today the nature of the human being has become more greedy. So they try to snatch the food of others. If we eat our own food, then the whole world there is no scarcity. Because Lord is providing everything for everyone. Hmm? So just to survive is not the idea. The idea is to <coughs> live a life which is more pleasurable, which is more enjoyable, which is more blissful. That is possible only by taking shelter. Huh? No one needs translation. We will read it only one person. <laughs> you can check. The Mapala of the Mazet son of Dawish. Maxu is the logic. Maxu is the logic. Okay. 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 So. How it is possible, it is only possible when we take absolute shelter in the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. Lord is there to give us His love. A love which is pure, a love which is beyond fake sentiments, hmm? fake emotions, which is pure and divine where each and every expression is very pure and very sweet. That is the speciality. Because we, all of us, we demand, we want, we desire love. 
and we try to find them in different people, in different things, and sometimes through animals also. Some people they feel very happy to keep some small pets, dogs, cats and all those things. Even there are people, those who have hogs also. Uh, I have seen such people, they grow hogs also, like their family member. Such a kind of attachment people develop for these uh, animals. What is the reason? Because of the love. Because of the love. But when we see, we understand at one point that it is not constant, always changing. Where, when an expression is not constant, then it can't be considered as real. Whatever is changing can't be real. Because truth never changes. Hmm? Truth is constant. It remains unchangeable. In, at any circumstance, at any condition of life, it never changes. That is the speciality of the truth. So when we see our feelings are changing in this world, <clears throat> that itself says what we are experiencing here is not true. Sometimes it remains on something, after some time it remains, on, it changes to some other thing. First we love our mother, then we love our Sister, then we love our wife, then we love our daughter. There is no hmm, consistency. One thing is very common, that is the desire to love. But it is changing the person, it is changing the emotion. The way we love our mother, we love our sister in a different way. We love our wife in a different way. We love our daughter in a different way. We love them, but it is not stable. And when we see these things are not in favor of my own pleasure, my own satisfaction, then we don't hesitate even to leave them. So many children, they don't want to live with their parents. It's so sad. So many parents, they don't want to live with their children. Own children, you gave birth and you don't want to live because that love is no more. But the desire to love is always there. And to get it, what we have to do? When there is love, then there is harmony. Without love, there can't be harmony. When there is no harmony, life can't sustain. If we have to survive, we need harmony. Nature loves us. We don't love nature, but nature loves us. That's why nature is providing oxygen. Hmm? Nature is providing light. Nature is providing resources to maintain ourselves. Why? Because nature loves us. Nature has life. Jeeva Jeevasya Jeevanam. Life with matter can't be the uh, sustainable content for life. It should be something which is conscious. Something which has life. And what has life? Nature has life. And that life Express its love to the soul spirits of this world. So we are surviving. It's raining on time. Crops are growing. Air is there. Everything is there. Fire is there. Everything is there. Or we are surviving. This is what we have to understand. If not, Harmony is disturbed. There is love between two countries. 
so there is harmony hmm? when there is harmony not necessarily there is love it's okay they they maintain harmony because they don't want disturbance but when you love then what comes spontaneously is peace harmony loving exchange everything comes that is the speciality so that is the reason <clears throat> we want to survive in this world happily and also if we want to get eternal peace the only solution which was given is to love what love divine love the love of god which sri chaitanya mahaprabhu appeared and bestowed when we try to love someone in this world all these emotions are momentary it is changing by time unchangeable truth that pure love is the love of god because lord remains eternal lord is transcendent he is never changing so whatever comes through him never changes and then it is <coughs> krishna oriented when it is god oriented then every moment is a blissful moment it is said in the scriptures atmendriya priti vancha tare bole kaam when we have the desire to enjoy for ourselves when i love someone for my own pleasure hmm? when i say that okay i love someone but the idea is by loving this person it is giving pleasure to my heart then that is lust it can't be considered as love love so when there is lust there is pain there is misery there is no difference sometimes it both appears like same thing hmm? both appears same what makes it different the result makes it different direction on which it is going makes us understand difference lust is like completely dark night and love is like the rising sun there is huge difference in darkness there is only misery in ignorance there is only misery the love of god is awakening knowledge about ourselves about other entities about the god about our nature about our life everything we are enlightened through love but in lust we become more and more ignorant we will fall we will lose so that is the reason mahaprabhu came and he gave us what we are supposed to do what we are supposed to follow if you really want to be happy what you do is you learn to love god learn to love krishna which is free from ignorance chirad adittam nijagupta vittam the hidden treasure in the heart of the supreme lord is that pure love what he does aham bhakta paradhina i become fully dependent on my devotee who is the devotee the one who is the possessor of this wealth called pure love of god who here is the possessor of this wealth called love of god lord becomes lord will belongs to that person only aham bhakta paradhina even though i may appear to be purely independent but i am no more independent after that i am fully dependent dependent on whom on a person no dependent on his love dependent on his heart 
इट इज सैड बाय वन डिवोटी कारा गृह बस हृदय मदीय मदभक्ति पास पास देना बंधन निश्चल आसन आई विल पुट यू इन द जेल द जेल यस वेन वी कैन से दिस वी कैन जस्ट से एनी वन लाइक दिस बट द डिवोटी सेस टू द लॉर्ड आई विल पुट यू इन द जेल विच जेल बस हृदय मदिया इन द जेल ऑफ माई हार्ट एंड आई वॉन्ट लेट यू एस्केप हियर वी कॉन्ट होल्ड एनी वन वी कॉन्ट कीप एनी वन इन अवर कंट्रोल If we try to do that, they get frustrated. Huh? First, they get irritated, and later they will quit. Then say, "Get out! You crazy person!" Always try to control, and Lord says, "I go in their control." It's a huge difference. Here, when you love someone, means you have to give everything to the person. There, when you love God, He will give Himself to you unconditionally. He will give Himself. Take me. I'm yours. And the devotee says, "I'll put you in the jail of my heart." And you think you will escape? Not possible. I will bind you. What, what you will use? What rope you are going to use? Mad bhakti paas adeda bandhan nischal asan. With the rope of my devotion, with the rope of my love, and the time forever, eternally, you will be residing here only without the chance of any escape. Like that, and Lord wants to escape. He never wants to escape because Lord is relishing that love. Which is in the heart of his beloved devotee, where he says, "I don't want anything," where Lord says, "I want to give you everything." He wants to give and he don't want to take. Huh? Why he wants to give? Because he loves him. Why he don't want to take? Because he loves him. When I love you, why should I want something else other than you? That is the idea. Then what happens if someone says like this? What you will do? Of course, we don't know what to do. We get confused. But Lord, He gives Himself whatever He wants. Lord will do that after that. He is the supreme personality of Godhead, who is the supreme proprietor, supreme enjoyer, hmm? supreme in every. Aspect when he wants to give himself completely to the devotee, whatever the Lord possesses, everything belongs to the devotee. What else we need in our life after that? We are struggling in this world for so many things which really doesn't carry any importance, but we forget. That we are actually bounded by so many miseries, starting from birth, disease, old age, death, four, and miseries caused by other living entities, miseries caused by our own mind and body, miseries caused by the nature, seven, and then lust, greed, anger, and pride, illusion, ego, six. Seven and six, thirteen, and then four defects are there: misconception of self, and anchoring for <coughs> asatrishna, anchoring for non-eternal things, and weakness of heart, and tendency to commit offence. Four. How many? Seventeen, and again four more. What are there? Anyhow, there are four more are there, and after that, desire to be of word, shabd, want to hear some nice words, 
always struggling that someone should say you are very beautiful you are very charming you are very nice always want to hear nice words you are very intelligent you are very lucky always burning in the heart hmm? we go somewhere and someone doesn't recognize us pay attention that disturbs more hmm? shabd that is also one misery sparsh want to have nice touch nice sensation ah so nice so thrill <laughs> hmm? that is also there do 23 and then <coughs> smell ah oh. <laughs> body is stinking we just put some nice perfume and then we go and <laughs> that's also misery we don't pay attention everyone has different body orders so sweat is coming coming from the body it's not like uh, nectar is coming it's not krishna's body that some nectar is coming <laughs> it's it's this rotten body the moment the soul leaves this body is nothing but a rotten thing it stinks you can't even keep it for 3 4 hours you have, if you want to keep you have to keep with some injections or some chemicals or some process or something like that. nothing but rotten and we want to feel that touch oh. that is also misery that smell mr napoleon never used to take shower you know this your your friend oh uh, he is the friend of uh, german people so he never took shower <laughs> so for him they invented perfumes there are more than 3000 4000 varieties of perfumes available in france one time i was amazed to see i went to one supermarket to buy few things and there was a section of uh, perfumes so any anyhow many people don't take shower these days that is different story <laughs> <laughs> so so like this smell always dying for what taste you know you can see cows they don't eat uh, anything which is uh, not meant for them dogs they don't eat what is not meant for them but human beings are so crazy they eat everything Huh? it's so strange taste they even eat insects i was surprised to see in the in france we went to one market to buy some vegetables i was surprised to see small small insects were also packed and then kept or kept for selling in supermarket people they eat in china here and there they eat so many things very strange taste all these are the miseries we can't even count how many miseries are there and we are suffering we will come out easily when we love god when we love god when we serve him and our goal should not be only to come out of it our goal should be to attract god when dhru maharaj wanted to see the lord narad goswami told him that you can't go with this body to meet him then he asked can he come here he said yes okay then i will bring him down and narad goswami initiated him and after that dhru maharaj chanted the holy name of the lord and finally lord has to come Lord has to come finally. Finally, Lord has to come for Dhru Maharaj. 
what should be our goal our goal should be sri krishna akarshani cha sava our goal should be to attract krishna wherever we are after that we don't want anything else <coughs> because where krishna is that place becomes vaikuntha that place becomes golok vrindavan Hmm? Because what Krishna says, ne- I never ever keep even a single feet outside Go- Vrindavan. Vrindavanam paritya paadu me kamna vachami. I don't even keep even a single feet outside Vrindavan. So when we desire to love Him and we target to attract Him, we make our goal is to attract Him. automatically we are getting everything in our life as a by product we will be free from all these miseries it is not the main thing main thing is to attract krishna where lord says aham bhakta paradina i am born to my devotee whatever my devotee wants i will do that and the devotee says i want you to dance come on mm-hmm. and he does that for the pleasure of the devotee i want you to sing he does that for the pleasure of his devotee he himself says madhat vinodartham karomi nana vidakri i perform different kinds of activities only to give pleasure to my beloved devotees because i want to see them happy that is what lord does for him what to free us from this worldly bondage and misery is what is it for us? nothing he will give us himself his loving devotion where lord says i am so indebted to my devotee i am indebted to the person who love me so deeply that i don't know what i have to give them now i have nothing what shall i give them i have nothing other than giving myself to them i have nothing now whatever way they want i will act in that way hmm? lord says in bhagavad gita whoever surrenders to me i will protect them from my illusion my maya illusionary energy maya me tam taranti te i'll rescue them from my maya but lord also says what he says <coughs> paritranaya sadhunam that also he is specifically mentioning what is paritran a pure devotee one who has taken shelter in the lotus feet of the lord he is never ever suffering from any kind of affliction no more worldly afflictions once the moment we take shelter in the lotus feet of the lord that when there is no afflictions when there is no misery from what we want him to rescue us there is nothing hmm? rescuing from what rescuing from the pain what pain the pain intense pain in separation from the lord and the strong desire to unite with him he is coming there and rescuing us taking us in his own abode when you don't have any misery what makes you suffer now hmm you don't have any misery a rich person he is thinking rich he has no misery no problem nothing what makes him suffer of course the in the world whatever you have you still cry that is misfortune hmm? <laughs> but in that abode where you don't have any misery but still you are crying for what crying for union with the lord crying for the loving exchange he never dies he never becomes old he never he is never sick he never have any problem he never experience any miseries and whoever comes in contact with him they will also never experience any misery there only one thing remains that is the love 
Only you are there, only I am there. There is nothing in between. It's an amazing movement. It's an amazing exchange between the Lord and His beloved devotee. We will get that because Lord Himself wants to give it. Nothing fake, everything is real. And further, depending on your mood, you get different kinds of loving experiences like Dasya, Sakya, Vatsali and Madhu. There are different other moods. Depending on your sadhana, depending on the intensity of your desire to attain, you experience it. That is the speciality. Krishna is there to give us Himself in all the levels. So whichever level we can reach, we can get Him on that level. That is the speciality. So that's why we should learn, we should practice to love Krishna. This life is for loving Krishna, not someone in this world, from this world. When we love people in this world, we get nothing, only disappointment. Because they will be using you, using your emotions only for their pleasures. They are living their life with the burden of their expectations on your shoulder. You have to live up to their desires and their standards to please them, to satisfy them. But there it's totally different. When we have to survive, to give happiness to someone in this world who can never be happy, then life becomes miserable. But when we surrender to Krishna, he expects nothing because he needs nothing. What Lord says, you just <coughs> give your heart to me. Patram pushpam param toyum yome bhaktya prichit. You may not have anything, no problem. You can just give me a leaf. Who is satisfied by giving one leaf? Anyone? Who is satisfied? by feeding the peels of the banana. You know this story? Mm -hmm. huh? Then, can we imagine that anyone in this world has ever ever appeared that if you feed them, please eat. They will be happy to eat the peel of the banana. Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> they will slap you and say, hey, come out. What's wrong with you? Come out. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you need to go to asylum. <laughs> but when she saw, sees, wife of Vidur, when she sees Krishna in her place, she was like speechless. And what she does? She has nothing to offer. Krishna says, you can see some bananas are there. Please feed me. I am very hungry. She brings those bananas and try to peel it, peel them. And after that, when she is trying to feed him, and he is not saying anything, he is very happily eating them. Who can eat banana? Peel. He ate them. And after some time, when her husband, he comes and he sees, and he is saying, you crazy person, what you are doing? Supreme Lord has mercifully kept his foot on in our place and you are offending by doing this. Move. And then he takes the banana and he tries to feed him. Lord says no. It's in Mahabharata very nicely described. He says no. I, I neither eat banana nor the peel. Then what you are eating? I only eat the love of my devotee. Uh, he is not hungry. He is God. He doesn't want anything. Then what he needs? The pure love which is in the heart of his devotee. I tell you one story from Vrindavan. There was one devotee of the Lord. I don't remember his name. He is very nice devotee. 
Now, he has the habit. What is his habit? When all the devotees have eaten food, whatever remains in the plates which are thrown in the dumping place, he goes there, collect all the food from all those plates and then make one plate and he offers it to the Lord. We can't do that. We can't even imagine. But he was doing that. Hmm? Whatever everywhere people have eaten and they just throw it after whatever remaining remnants, he was collecting them like this, cleaning all the plates and then made one plate and offering it to the Lord. Now what happened? Yeah. Now what happens? <clears throat> Devotees, they came to know this. And they were so upset. How can someone do like this? They are so upset. Very sad. That this person, he will definitely send us to hell. Doing like this is an offense. So they try to explain him. No, he is not listening. So one day, all the devotees, they decided, we will not leave even a single grain in our plate. <laughs> we eat the whole thing and we take less and we eat the whole thing. We will not leave even a single grain in our plate. Okay. Everyone planned and they all did like that. Plates are completely empty. <laughs> <laughs> Now, he, it's too late. It's like almost like evening. He's feeling hungry also. And now he's searching for some prasad in those plates. Finally, he got only this much. Hmm? He got only this much of prasad, like one spoon or maybe a little more. Then when he did that, it's too late. It has gone from his mind that he has to offer. He just took and then put in his mouth. When he put in his mouth, immediately it strikes him. Are you today I did not offer? He neither he can spit nor he can eat. Food is in his mouth and he is crying. What has happened to me today? Only to uh, fill my stomach. I just put in my mouth. I don't even think that I should offer it to you. What is my life? Uh, repenting and crying and feeling very pain in his heart. Not eating. You know what happens? Lord speaks. It was in Vrindavan many years ago, not yesterday or today. <laughs> Many years ago, old story. Lord speaks from there and he says, Every day you offer me what others ate. One day can't you offer me what you ate? He took, he takes it out from his mouth and then he offers it to the Lord and he eats again. Can we ever imagine such loving God. He is not God. He is Krishna. That we get. Easily we get. If we surrender to Him. If we chant His holy name. It's very easy. To love God is very easy. <laughs> Can you imagine like this? No one can imagine. That is Krishna. His friend, he is drinking buttermilk. His friend is drinking buttermilk. Madhumangal. He has the desire that I want to give what my mother made to Krishna. But it is very sour. It's very sour. How he will offer that sour thing? Because it will spoil the taste hmm, of his 
tender lips and tongue. He has the pain in his heart that I can't offer this to Krishna. But he has desire in his heart. Lord understands his desire. What he does? He goes to him and he tries to snatch from him. And he says, no, this is not for you. He says, no, I want to drink. No, this is not for you. Finally, he takes some and then when he knows that I can't fight with Krishna, I can't, I'm not strong. He just throws it on the ground and the pot breaks. Everything is splashed. Whatever he is drinking, what falls from his mouth on his body, he is licking that. When person does all this, when person does all this, when there is a very strong love, deep love, very strong attachment, a person in this world also can never do like that. You eat something and it falls from your mouth and you will not find anyone coming and then happily licking it. Not possible. And also what you, what is in your mouth, mixed with the saliva and all everything and then you say eat it eh? <laughs> impossible but Lord can go to that extent also that is the love he has for his beloved devotee that's why you should develop that love he is already very merciful when because of our deeds because of our past karma if we take the birth of a stool worm Hmm? Worm of a stool and leaves, takes birth in the stool, lives in the stool, eats the stool. There also Krishna is living with that jiva in the form of Chetifur, in the form of Paramatma. He is residing along with the jiva in the stool. Also. Can we imagine? We can't imagine. If we are unclean, then no one wants to come and sit with us. Uh, they say first go take shower and come. That is the word. And when because of our bad karma, because of our bad deeds, we get the birth of a stool eating insect and we become that and we are in the stool. And then also along with the soul, Krishna is there. Sarvasya chaham hridisan nivishto. I am residing in the region of heart of each and every jiva. Wherever the jiva goes. He is with us in the hell. He is with us in heaven. He is with us here. He is with us in Golok. He is everywhere. Hmm? That much love he has for us. Only we have to awaken the love which is in our heart for, for him. And then life becomes beautiful. Life becomes very special. When we love Krishna, and that means we, everyone will love us. We are loved by everyone, entire creation. We become one family, and there is harmony, there is peace, there is joy. Each and every moment is a relishable moment. You can see Mata Sabari, you heard the name of Mother Sabari. She is one tribal lady. Devotee of Lord Ramachandra. And when Lord Ram, he goes to see her. She is eating the fruit half and she is giving it to Lord Ram. She became very old alone. But her was always happy, feeling joyful. But the rishis living there, they were not that happy. They were not happy. But... She was always happy. Dhritarashtra, being the king of Hastinapur, great kingdom of ancient India, was never happy. But Vidur, living in a small hut with nothing to eat, was always happy. Duryodhan, he even practically became the king of Hastinapur after Pandavas left for exile. But he was never happy. But living in the forest, Pandavas were always happy. Hmm? Place doesn't make the person happy or sad. 
the condition, the state of mind makes the person happy or unhappy. So the mind should be focused, engaged in the loving service of the Lord to make ourselves happy. Narada Goswami says, Kenapya Upayana Mana Krishna Niveshya by hook or crack, whatever possible way, engage your mind in the service of Krishna. If you once engage your mind in the service of Krishna, after that he will do everything for you. You don't need to do anything for anyone. He can even, he was holding the shoes of Draupati. When you, Bhishma Pitama, he sees this, he was crying. That how special the Lord is. All Bhishma Pitama he is one of the Mahajanas. He knows everything, who Krishna is and all that. When he sees that Krishna is carrying the shoes of a Draupati, he became like he came in ecstasy. He is in ecstasy now. <coughs> he sees. He is holding, he is trying to hold the Padukas of Nanda Maharaj with his small little hands and try to keep them on his head. And he is trying to carry them. He can do anything for his devotee. Just a devotee, for the pleasure of a devotee. That is Krishna. He can steal key for his devotee. He can become a thief for his devotee. He can come and give witness for his devotee. Anything we can't imagine that he can do only for his devotee. Devotee means the one who is the possessor of the wealth called the pure love of Godhead. We are very fortunate that we are coming in the parampara where our Acharyas are teaching us the process how to love Krishna, how to love God. So we should take the best advantage of their association and make our life successful, meaningful. Thank you very much. Thank you.